In 1908, in the London Times, a reporter wrote, the bookman's paradise exists, and I have seen it. I have entered the most carefully, jealously guarded treasure house in the world, and nothing in it has been hidden from me. This exhibition is an origin story of a building, but in a way it's also an origin story of this institution, of what became the Morgan Library and Museum. Building the Bookman's Paradise gives you the real story behind the creation of this building. It takes you into the details and the process and the decision making behind what you see today. And it comes at a very important moment in our institution's history because we have just completed a six year restoration and renovation of the J. Pierpont Morgan Historic Library. As you see, the history of the building in this exhibition meticulously and engagingly laid out. Then you can walk out into the garden itself and see the building up close. In the exhibition, we really wanted to tell a very detailed story about the construction process of the library. On view are spectacular architectural drawings, early photographs and paintings that show how it looked a hundred years ago. But you'll also see documents that show the stoneworkers' wages, correspondence with the various craftsmen, letters, and even invoices that show that there were so many people, contractors, tradespeople, advisors, architects, who were making this all happen. J. Pierpont Morgan is at the center of it all. He was an American financier, an art collector, and a bibliophile. Charles Fallon McKim was certainly one of the leading American architects of the day. The two came together in 1902, client and architect, and began the process of making this building. As you proceed through the exhibition, you see the hands of so many other people who were bringing this building into being. People like Thomas White, William Mitchell Kendall, August Ruling. These are some of the really skilled drafters that were working in the studios of McKim, Maiden White, articulating McKim's vision. But there were hundreds and hundreds of people who brought their vision into being. The restoration and the exhibition really work in tandem. A lot of this research needed to be done for us to better understand the building in order for us to preserve and restore it along the lines of its original appearance. So there's a direct line from those workers, those laborers, those builders, to the people who have brought new life to the building today. It was Morgan's collection that really inspired the creation of this library. And so in the exhibition, you'll find some high points from that collection, such as the Lindau Gospels and the Golden Gospels of Henry VIII. And you can see the way that Morgan built that collection and his passion for books and manuscripts. And that really is why the library exists. From the beginning, the idea is that the building would house a private study for Morgan, a library room to house his collection, a wonderful entrance hall to welcome visitors, and then a small office for his librarian, Belle Costa Green, who was hired in 1905 as the building was under construction. Belle Green would go on to transform what was one man's paradise into a public institution, a public library and museum. She is really the link between Pierpont Morgan and the Morgan we know today, because she's the one who took a book men's paradise and made it ours. I think the Morgan is one of the most spectacular spaces in America. You really have a sense of being surrounded by all of this knowledge, all of the learning that's contained in those books. And of course, it started as a bookman's paradise for one bookman. And over time, it has been transformed into an inspiring place that is open to all of us.